Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Aquino, your host, and while I do this program bi-weekly, I have the most fun when it's something that's spontaneous and exciting and done with friends, and that's what's happening today. I've got two very dear friends with me who are doing wonderful things throughout the islands. We're going to talk about a very important program today called Malama Meals. Since the coronavirus struck Hawaii, terrible things have happened in terms of the lives of individuals, in terms of a disease that we have confronted, and shutting down of work. And that shutting down of work has resulted in the loss of jobs for many people and the shuttering of people in their homes, which has resulted in their inability to get food. But in the midst of this, something wonderful has happened. And that is people have banded together to help one another. And one of those examples is the program called Malama Meals. Every day, Malama Meals serves 13,000 or more meals to individuals across the islands. And that's a staggering amount of work. To date, since the start of the coronavirus crisis, Malama Meals has served nearly 300,000 meals. This is to Kapuna, to people who are shut in, and people who simply cannot afford to get the meals that they need at this time. And I'm so very proud to be associated with the program and just to be a small volunteer helping the people who are on the ground and you're going to meet a couple of them today. We have with us today the founder of the program or one of the key founders of the program, Ahmad Ramadan, and along with him the coordinator for our program, a volunteer on the island of Molokai, Luana Alapa. Let me introduce each of them and let them say hi. First to Ahmad. Ahmad, aloha my dear friend. Thank you for coming back onto the program. How are you doing? And tell a little bit about your own background. Aloha, Kili'i. Thank you so much uh, for having me on your program. Um, my name is Ahmad. I'm, um, my business um, usually is spot, uh, but since uh, the Corona COVID situation has happened, uh, we kind of switched gears and have been uh, really pushing Malama meals and making sure that uh, all our kupuna and keiki and people out who need our um, able to get the food that they need on a regular basis and we're just trying to do the best that we can right now. Well, thank you so much, Ahmad. You've been a dear friend for so many years and I'm so pleased in what I've seen in terms of the development of your business model and your success, but even more pleased now to see what you're doing during this time of crisis for so many people. Another dear friend who joins us today is actually on the road and this is the exciting thing about today's show. <laughs> She's right there sitting at Molokai Airport in her vehicle, waiting for the plane, the plane, the plane, the plane. The plane. <laughs> 17 or 1800 meals to be distributed very rapidly. I'll get to that in a little bit, but first tell us a little bit about yourself. She does so many things. One of them, many of you know, is she is the coordinator of the Mrs. Hawaii pageants. But mm -hmm. uh, my dear friend, Luana Alapa. Luana, welcome to the program. Let people know what you do. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm thrilled to be here, to, especially from uh, filming this from the island of Molokai, my, uh, my second home. I have been here since the 1970s with my father and my stepmom, and we fly back and forth between the islands. So I have a lot of family roots here. At the same time, I've also, uh, on the island of Oahu, I'm a single mother of four. I have done everything under the roof from producing events as an event planner. One of them is, of course, the Mrs. Hawaii State and Miss and Teen Scholarship Pageants, along with many other events that I coordinate, especially for communities uh, and, and doing um, promotional or uh, personal development work. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling to, for me to give back to those who are, I'm all about empowerment of women. And this is something that I find very passionate about and I will be doing here on plane has landed and the, they, are, they have the trolleys that are going out right now to collect all the foods and bring it to us. And so would you like for me to go outside and do a quick little pan I to would. show all our volunteers? I'm going to switch back to Ahmad while you do that and then in a minute okay. show us everything going on outside. This is very exciting. And yes. while Luana is out of the car, Ahmad, tell us how Alama Meals originated. It was you and a couple of other business people. Great idea. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we started Malama Meals uh, just through the pandemic of COVID and we realized that a lot of the kupuna were just not able to leave their homes, you know, it would just, you know, cause them to be susceptible to COVID. And so we wanted to create a program in where we'd be able to take care of them 
in a way that uh, they would feel safe, secure, but still get everything that they needed um, to have, you know, to, to, to get through their day. You've done a tremendous job and you're in how many locations island wide now? Over 100 uh, locations right now, mainly uh, low income housing, senior facilities and uh, areas of need throughout the islands. Well, that's uh, terrific. And I remember when you asked me for help in terms of opening up some neighbor island locations, one of the places I thought that would really be needy and where we have some friends is the island of Molokai. And so we're going to go back to Luana, who's helped us to actually get that program initiated. She's brought some great volunteers together. So we're back with you, Luana. You're out there on the airfield. Show us something that's happening there. Well, first of all, I just want to share that, you know, uh, the Malama Meals couldn't commit a, a more profound time in our lives. Uh, you know, 90% of the population here are, are in poverty. They, there are not many jobs available. And uh, so the people definitely are in dire need. And we are so, so thrilled with Malama Meals to be able to do this uh, wonderful service to us. And, and, and to thank you all, I'm going to just switch the camera. I'm going to show you something. Everybody, here we go. Say aloha. See that? Well, aloha aloha to all of you. That's wonderful. Did you see that? Did you see awesome. that? We did. We see your crew there waiting for the plane to unload. Yes. So the cargo. So the the big thing for them is thanking you folks because this is what it's all about, and we want to be sure that uh, all the people back on Oahu and everyone else knows the people from Molokai really truly appreciate you. And all the things that you've done is feeding our people as well as everyone here on, Molika, uh, on Oahu and throughout the state. So we, we can't thank you enough for what you're doing. And I'm, I'm so, so blessed to have such awesome people here who have put together uh, their teams of volunteers to make sure that the food goes out to all those who are in need. And I, I, and I tell you, we, we can't get any better than this. It's the most amazing cruise. Everybody say, yeah! Woo! That's exciting to see happening now. Now we're going to go back to Ahmad and let me ask you just briefly, what kind of operation is needed to make Malama Meals work? Food is produced on Oahu, packaged, flown like a military operation to the neighbor islands, and it involves all kinds of things from quality control to safety procedures, and you're in charge of all of that. Ahmad, tell us how it works. It's it's a it's a very uh, tedious, uh, tricky task, um, and Luana has actually made it uh, amazingly smooth uh, with her her help in getting everything coordinated on Molokai. Um, I mean, it's been absolutely like like perfect. Everything they do is very spot on, and it's just been going uh, super smooth. As far as on Oahu side. Um, it requires us to be up at, you know, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, prepping and uh, getting all the food ready and getting it in cameras and plating, boxing and delivering to different locations. And we have a team of about 100 people here and about 45 volunteers from different organizations like uh, Catholic Charities, uh, Kanu Hawaii, um, a lot of different organizations throughout in, in uh, putting our hands together and trying to make things happen uh, to get the food out to the people in need. Well, that's wonderful. You know, Luana, your counterpart on the island of Hawaii was on our program during the last episode. His name is oh, Kami good. Aloha. And I'm so glad that with Kami Aloha's help, we were able to get Malama Meal started there, and they've been distributing up to 12,000, excuse me, 1,200 or more meals in a single day on the island of Kauai. Now, what is your goal today? How many meals are coming off of that plane right now? And where are you going to distribute them to? So, so today we have 1,800, 1,800 meals coming off of the plane. And uh, wow. we have uh, everyone in place, as you saw. But there's one in particular that I want you to meet because she can give you a little bit more of a background of the, the people that we're serving and give you uh, a little bit of some statistics so it'll really help you guys understand what we, what's going on here on Molokai. So I'd like for you to meet Rosie Davis coming over. And then here you are, he's here. Hello. Aloha. So Aloha, Rosie. Da, 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 da. Love your mask. Well, I'm the not the right representative for the Molokai Homestead Farmers Alliance. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm the authorized representative for the Molokai Homestead Farmers Alliance. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on. We just got. No, no, no. Um, uh, hold Go on. Ahead, you can keep talking while we should work something. So yeah. I just wanted to let you know that we are uh, Molokai. Well, we'll get them back in just a moment. That's what happens when we're flying uh, by the sea of our fans, <laughs> but we're gonna make it happen. Uh, yeah. Ahmad, what has been one of the biggest challenges that Malama Meals has overcome in this whole process of delivering food all across the island? You've had so much to do and so much to learn. I, I'd love to know how you dealt with one of your challenges. Um, our, bi our biggest challenge is, is, is really you know, we, we see this major need and, and just having to like kind of uh, go through a system in, in still being able to like uh, have the right protocol and security measures to make sure that what we're providing is safe and adequate in the all following all the different types of regulations that are required through the state of Hawaii. And, uh, you know, the, I think I think what we've been trying to overcome and, and is is really the, the need. Like it's just enormous. Like right now we have over six thousand people waiting to get meals um, that uh, are still not uh, completely vetted through the system. And so working on that process um, has been um, something very tedious, but at the same time um, important. Uh, to make sure that we have all this information um, provided for whoever it may be. Um, how, how we plan to overcome it is uh, we've created some software um, that will be able to like uh, provide information to people on how they can uh, receive meals and what the requirements are and uh, just kind of uh, going from there. You know, one of the things that I really respect about the program is a real commitment to providing a, not just food, but a meal experience that is enjoyable, that is satisfying, that is tasty, and that comes packaged with aloha and malama care from people. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your 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 meals, your rest, uh, your actual menu? I mean, when I've seen uh, what you've done. It looks more like restaurant grade meals than, than anything else. It's not peanut butter and jelly sandwich. In a box. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely. What do you pass. serve and what, what do, do nutritional value? So, right now, we are serving every day uh, a, a chicken, fish, beef, vegetarian, and pork option, which uh, constitutes a protein, uh, a starch, some type of uh, vegetable. And we try to keep a very balanced um, type of a meal that will, um, you know, nourish and help uh, make people feel good um, in the day. But at the same time, we're really uh, creative with our menus and we try to switch it up as much as possible. Uh, I want to say that we, we try not to make the same menu twice. And so we're constantly doing different types of food, of, but at the same time, focusing on comfort foods that people, um, you know, have um throughout you know their life and here in Hawaii so a lot of different local items but um you know still kind of giving them varieties and different types of uh ethnic foods like uh, we'll have you know sometimes we'll have Thai food or we'll have Japanese food or we'll even have sometimes like some North African stuff so uh we kind of switch it up but at the same time still follow through with uh you know, trying to go, go with the local favorites, like we'll have uh, mochiko chicken or katsu or, you know, a teri miso chicken or different things that, uh, you know, you would typically find uh, on a local menu too. Well, that's so wonderful. It, it's tasty. And, you know, Kami Aloha, when he was on the program with us last time, our coordinator on Kauai, talked about the fact that a hot meal does more than simply nourish the body. It also feeds the soul and feeds the, the heart of the individual who's receiving the hot meal. And so it's doing a lot, especially in some of the care homes that, that you deliver to. Now, such a program is not free. It, it has taken the sacrificial contributions of a group of businessmen who had no promise of ever being able to find any partners to, to help out. But it, it has attracted a good number of 
donors. Uh, and so can you tell us a little bit about how Malama Meals is funded and how people can help out if they'd like to do that? Absolutely. So Malama Meals, you know, we started off kind of just uh, doing this on our own and uh, we've been getting tremendous support from uh, different organizations throughout the islands. Uh, we recently uh, received a, a vehicle from uh, Windward Dodge, uh, and this helps to get meals throughout the island, uh, delivering anywhere between 300 to 400 meals per delivery and four or five times a day. We also received uh, another vehicle from uh, Cutter Ford, um, uh, Heather, and, and, and she was amazing in, in, in also helping us to do that. But also Toyota, uh, they were able to provide us forklifts. Um, as you know, uh, prior to this, our locations, we weren't pushing as much food as this. And so now we buy um, chicken and proteins and, and different types of products by the pallets. And so we actually needed, uh, rather than you know boxes at a time, we, we needed a couple of forklifts. And so uh, Toyota um, Servco was able to provide that to us. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of help, um, you know, Central Pacific Bank, uh, OHA, a lot of different organizations throughout the islands that have been able to help uh, secure different funds for us. Here. us. In fact, people can go to malamameals.org, that's malamameals.org, and make a contribution. Is that right? And we've had more than $50,000 come in. Now, let me yeah. take a short break. Uh, very momentary because we want to get Luana back on. So this is a technical break. Welcome back. We're broadcasting at East Luana from the island of Molokai. Luana, show us what you're doing right now as the convoy is getting ready to deliver those meals all, all across the island. Wow. Everybody, uh, aloha. Thank you very much for everything. Aloha. So thank you. All the trucks, everyone has their uh, meals in the boxes that goes to their respective trucks. They will now go and deliver it to the people. Uh, we have a special guest. I know we, we lost her, but I want her to come back one more time. One more time and, um, oh my gosh, and say, oh, please, oh, this thing is still on. <laughs> there she is. Please, this is what you were talking to earlier, and I want her to quickly explain to you folks uh, what the programs are like here in uh, Molokai, and she is an expert in it. She knows exactly what's going on. And this is Rosie Davis once again. Hi, Rosie, aloha, Rosie. Earlier. Uh, so I just wanted to share with you a few statistics. Um, I'm with the uh, authorized representative for the Molokai Homestead Farmers Alliance, and we do a lot of programs for the community. Right now, you folks are serving about 20% of the population on Molokai. Um, our population here is about 7,200, and with the 1,800 plates you folks have sent over. And we are also 200% the federal poverty level and so you guys are doing a great job sending that over to the kapuna the children in need and the displaced and unemployed families on the island wow. so we really appreciate that wow. rosie thank you so much for what you're doing out there and all the volunteers on the bottom we're getting ready to wrap up and i wanted to give you a chance before you jump on the road again to, to give us a, a last minute word or any summation you'd like to. Uh, and let me ask you, is there any special story of anyone who's really been touched by Malama Meals? Well, you know, uh, Kili'i, we've had so many wonderful testimonials and I know Rosie, you've, you've heard them from the field as well, the people. I think you had a few people that wrote to you or and expressed their appreciation. This is just amazing opportunity 
for these people to know that they are cared for, that people are thinking of them outside of Molokai. Go ahead, Rosie. You know, a lot of it has come from email and text. Just, it's amazing, the emojis that we never <laughs> thought we would receive. But um, they're very thankful, very grateful in this time of need. As, as you well aware, I'm sure, of the unemployment, you know, the filing uh, system that wasn't able to be operated. So I just talked to someone that said, oh, my gosh, I got three claims filed, but at least I know I'm getting a meal for today. You know, yes, we have a lot of, uh, we're, we're rich here in Molokai as far as resources, but then sometimes we can't get some of the things we need in the store because I'm sure you're aware also that Molokai only has one day barge um, from Young Brothers now. I mean, and also they find themselves struggling. So it's not just our community. It's also um, a lot of other services that we don't have. So the people look forward to this. I've been getting texts all morning to say, is the meal coming today? What time should we be there? And even though it's been posted on a flyer, they just want to make sure to make time to come and pick that up. Because we also have people that don't have vehicles, so they send others to pick it up. So we're really, really blessed with a lot of, we probably have about 48 volunteers. Um, and so we use them on different projects. This program runs so smooth. The minute yes. it's picked up, it's taken, the volunteer divided on the table, and they start coming and we check off their name. So mahalo to you. I'm going to have to say aloha because they're waiting I'm, for their meals. I'm, they're waiting for their meals. <laughs> so I gotta take, like, you go, you go. <laughs> Rosie, <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. You thank, you. Yes, thank you. Luana, thank you. Mahalo to you, Luana. You're doing oh, a great Oh, my pleasure. Job. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Ma. Thank Aloha. you, Fili. I got to go deliver me. Thank you, Ma. Godspeed. Godspeed. No. Ahmad, that's so wonderful. And you must have such a sense of satisfaction when you see in over um, 100 look. You know, you know Kili, I feel like we have to do more after hearing what they said. It's, 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 I, I can't even believe that. I, 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 we got to do more. I love that, what you're saying. Close us with a picture of your vision. Where are we going now with Malama Mi? We, we have a huge goal for the audience. A picture of my vision is, is everyone, you know, you know, working together to, you know, be one big Ohana and ultimately everyone just helping each other to get through this pandemic and being able to really uh, thrive through it and, and come out on top and uh, find the best in ourselves. So, um, you know, we're going to keep pushing and, and doing our best. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and we want to get to the place and it sounds incredible when Ahmad first told me that this was the goal, but it's part of what attracts me to the program. Ahmad wants to see that we get to the place where we're feeding 100,000 people in need. Yes. Hope that that time That's of need will not last very long, but while it's here, Malama Meals wants to be out there in the front taking care of people, caring for people, as the word Malama means. Ahmad, I thank you so much for what you and your colleagues and the other founders have done, and uh, this is just so exciting to see each island eventually getting the same kind of service that we have on Oahu. Much aloha to you and thank you for being with us today. Aloha. Aloha. Thank Mike. you so much, Kili. I really appreciate everything. Aloha. My guest today was Ahmad Ramadan, a founder of Malama Meals, along with Luana Alapo, one of our great volunteers who's coordinating the work on Molokai. And if you want to support the work of Malama Meals, would you go to the website, Go to the website and just explore it. See the faces and read the statistics. It's just wonderful. And then go to the button to donate and click malamameals.org. That's malamameals.org. A very good thing for Hawaii at this time. I'm Kelee Akina, your host on Hawaii Together. Until next time on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network, much aloha to you. Aloha. <laughs>